What's up guys, we'll go back to check back to another video and in today's video we are with the E92 M3 and I just wanted to kind of make a different video um, mainly because I've owned this car twice now and uh, my love for it hasn't really changed. So for those of you guys who are new to the channel, this is my E92 M3, it's a 2011 LCI competition package. This thing is absolutely stunning. I love this car so, so, so much. I've owned a 2008 pre-LCI um, E92 M3 as well, but that one happened to have red guts, black exterior. This has a um, kind of like a dark blue exterior. Um, this one has a DCT. My first one had a manual gearbox, and my first one was a manual with the single, single hump. This is the DCT with the double hump, which for those of you guys who don't know what that is, um, this one has the nav, my other one did not. So in today's video, I wanna convince you guys to actually buy an E92 M3. I'm gonna tell you guys the five reasons why I absolutely love the E92 M3 chassis more than honestly any other M car I've ever owned. And the first thing has to be value. For those of you guys who are new to BMWs, the M cars hold their value the most out of all BMWs, and especially if you go with like a rare spec, it does hold its value really, really, really well. For example, this is a 2011, which is a car that's nearly 11, almost 12 years old. Still valued around 40 to 45,000, and this thing had a sticker price of around $60,000. So after 11 to 12 years, um, putting about 40,000 miles on the car, which is what this thing has, it has only gone down $15,000, and actually they are going back up, which is super crazy. So for me, the most ideal M car to purchase is the M cars that don't lose value. Now the newest ones um, are honestly really expensive. You have an MSRP of around $80,000, um, and right now they're selling for about $100,000. Those will be going down to as little as 60,000, maybe even 50,000 one day. So if you guys are in the market for an M car right now, I honestly do not recommend the G80s. Right now, honestly, the best bang for the buck would be the F80s or the E92s, just where the value is at, honestly. Uh, the E46s, the E36s, and all those older BMW M3s. Those cars are rising up so quickly. They're in a 30 to $40,000 price range at this point, um, and I only see them going up as well, but the best bang for the buck for the newer cars, the lower miles, I would stick to the E90, the E90 90 X chassis and the F80 X chassis just because you get more bang for the buck in terms of technology, in terms of drivability, in terms of performance. The newer the M car, obviously the more performance, otherwise BMW would be out of business. So yes, the first thing has to be value and I think this thing has absolutely amazing value. My first E92 M3 was a salvage title. Um, I sold it for about $20,000 pre-COVID um, and it was a salvage title. It's crazy to say, that was over four years ago. I had it over 100 and I believe 120,000 miles. So for a salvage title, 120,000 miles and I got 20,000 nearly 20,000 salvage title that's super crazy and right now this one has 40,000 miles this is a very clean example of an E92 M3 and these ones are going for about 40 to 45,000 dollars um, so yeah again they just have really good value even if they're salvage um, with crazy high mileage they still go for pretty pennies unlike if you guys go with a normal BMW um, those cars with higher mileage those can get as little as $5,000 so even if you end up picking it up for $50,000 right out of the dealer 10 years 20 years later they will only go down because those cars are mass produced unlike M cars. They are kind of mass produced, but on a way shorter scale. So ultimately, uh, there's way less of these, and also these are more desirable. Now the second reason why I absolutely love the E92 M3 chassis, and honestly, another reason why I actually own another one, um, compared to my one that I owned like four years ago, um, is how comfortable this car is. I've driven it to LA, which is about a six to seven hour drive, and uh, this car, honestly guys, is one of the most comfortable, like the seats are super comfortable, the steering, the suspension is very comfortable. Like you can also adjust the suspension to make it more stiff, more planted, and at the same time just have it in comfort mode, which is really, really, really nice. This one just so happens to be equipped with the EDC suspension. Not all of them come with the EDC suspension, but this one has it, and I absolutely love it. And I also super love, again, the seats in this car. It is the most comfortable seat out there. And for those of you guys who are subscribed to the channel, you guys know I have a 328i E92 that I put M3 seats inside of because honestly, guys, these seats have the most cushion, and they hug you, and they do everything. These seats are honestly amazing. Um, I have owned an F80 before, I've owned an F82 before, um, I've owned an E36 M3, I've owned obviously another E92 M3, um, and I've driven E46s M3s, I've driven E30s, and I've driven G80s. Believe it or not, the G80 honestly is very uncomfortable, like very uncomfortable, especially with the go with the bucket seats. I cannot imagine driving that car for six, seven hours. It'd be very uncomfortable, and it's a pain to get in and out of. Um, it is beautiful, like don't get me wrong, they're way more beautiful than these seats, but in terms of comfortability, um, not even there. Now if you're buying the car honestly strictly for performance use, 
use and just track use. Um, obviously, uh, BMW went in the right direction with the G80 in terms of the seats, but this is like a really well-rounded seat. They hug you, they're very comfortable, and if you guys have like, where it's like me, where I get my butt starts hurting and very uncomfortable over long drives, and you guys like to commute an M car as well, this is by far the most comfortable M car I've ever owned, and honestly, the second one would have to be the E46, surprisingly, rather than the F80 or the G80. The F80 um, doesn't have as much cushion. Um, it is easier to get in and out of. The G80 does not have any cushion, honestly, uh, and it's very hard to get out of. This car is kind of like that soft spot, which is right in between. Um, kind of a little hard to get in and out of just because you don't want to ruin your bolster. Um, this thing does stick out a lot to kind of keep you in the seat, but it's also very thick, so very comfortable. Um, so the only thing that, honestly, that would happen is damaging your seats over time. You just have to be more careful. But other than that, guys, again, very, very, very comfortable seats, and this is one of the main reasons why I absolutely love this car. Now, the third thing I absolutely love about this car, guys, is the steering. The steering wheel, um, it doesn't look the absolute best. I still love the steering wheel. It is very comfortable to hold, um, and it is absolutely gorgeous, but I've, I love the F80 steering wheel more and the G80, the G80 steering wheel even more than this. BMW has done a great job of making their steering wheels look even better. Um, the main compliment for this car, it's not the actual look of it, which again, this thing still looks really good. It's the actual comfortability of when driving it. This thing honestly has a kind of like a medium range where it's like stiff and not so stiff. It's like the perfect medium range in terms of driving. I honestly love the steering wheel feel to this car. I feel like if I wanted to drift it or track it, it'll be super easy to control, but it's not too light to uh, lose control if you guys know what I mean. But yeah, guys, this is easily one of the things I absolutely love about this car, which is the steering wheel feel, especially again, uh, paired with these seats. Very fun to drive over long distances and honestly, very easy to use. And again, I think BMW absolutely killed it with the steering wheel feel by far my favorite steering wheel feel out of all M cars I've ever driven. That's something I realized also with this steering wheel is that it's actually very responsive. Every little adjustment to the steering wheel, you can actually feel it when you're actually driving the car. So I absolutely love the fact that it is very, very, very responsive. And again, like I've owned E36s, M3s, I've driven E46s, I've driven E30s, I've driven G80s, I've owned F80s, I've owned an F82. And long story short, if you guys want a well-rounded track car and a well-rounded daily, this might be the car for you, honestly. Like I'm wholeheartedly, um, now obviously I'm gonna have probably post a video tomorrow about the things I don't like about this car. I mean, that, I don't wanna blow anything, but it has to do also with the daily ability of this car. There's one thing I don't like about it, but uh, we'll mention that hopefully in the next video. But that leads me to my fourth thing, which is why I think this car is absolutely amazing for the track and absolutely amazing for a daily driver. And that'll have to be my dirty V8 engine bay. This car is 40,000 miles. The rod bearings are done. The actuators are done on this car. So it's actually very, very, very reliable. This doesn't have any oil consumption issues. This one in particular has been very, very, very reliable for me. And because it's a naturally aspirated car, I'm never going to have any heat issues at the track or anything like that. I mean, yeah, I could upgrade a couple more cooling things, but end of the day, I'm not going to have like heat soak from turbos and the power is always going to be predictable the entire time I'm on the track. So that's the thing I absolutely love about this car. And that's actually something that I also think is going to help in terms of value for this car is that this is the only M3 with a V8, I believe, and the only M3 with a naturally aspirated V8. I don't think there's any other um, M cars, honestly, other than the E39 M5 with a naturally aspirated V8. So I think those two cars, and again, this is the only M3 with this engine producing 400 horsepower without turbos or without anything else, I think is very impressive. And guys, for the fifth reason to why I absolutely love the E90X chassis, the M3 models, um, is how responsive this engine is, how predictable this engine is. I know every single time I'm hitting the track or every single time I'm downshifting, every time I'm flooring on this car, that as soon as it hits five to 6,000 RPMs, that's where the power is pretty much gonna start hitting. I know that every single time, now with turbo cars, um, the power honestly hits different every single time and it's very unpredictable. Now, obviously, if you take your turbo car to the track, for example, I'm, just gonna, I'm kind of referencing the F80 M3, the F82 M3s. Um, those cars, um, the power is very unpredictable. Actually, I've totaled an M4 um, just because of the, how the basically boost hit me out of nowhere. Um, obviously, I was not trained. I was not practiced with that car. That is completely my fault. I will consider myself a bad driver um, for losing power to that thing. But there's a lot of people that drive the new Supers and stuff like that that basically boost hits out of nowhere um, when they're, and they're, they just lose a whole rear end. Like It's crazy where the power hits. And on this car, it's completely predictable and you can actually control it the entire time. And that's what I love is someone like me that's not a, I'm not a professional driver. So having a car like this that's fun to drive, um, a performance vehicle, and it's not scary 
to drive is honestly, I love it. I love it. My first E92 M3, I used to drift it all the time and I had no issues with it. It was even a manual and uh, yeah, I had no issues drifting. I, I thought I was a professional driver and everything because of that car, because of how easy it is to drive unlike the M4 and the M3s. They're very easy to drive, but as soon as you start like trying to swing it and stuff like that, again, the power is so unpredictable. And especially if you start tuning those things and stuff like that, it is a six cylinder with turbos. Like the turbos are gonna be hitting boost like crazy. Again, I'm not bashing on all the other M cars. I love the F80s, I love the F82s, I love the G80s. But ultimately, I feel like for in terms of predictability, this car is my favorite. But yeah, guys, we are at the end of the video. The next video is gonna have to be things I don't like about this car, which honestly, there's not many, but there are a few. And the few that I know about, I really don't like it. But I mean, you guys will find out in the next video what those things are. So if you guys want to buy E92 M3, just wait for tomorrow's video. Hopefully you guys will know, uh, the, honestly, the reasons I don't like this car. But ultimately, I believe the pros outweigh the cons. Um, so at the end of the day, I do believe this is a car that, you know, somebody, if you're in the if you're in the M market, you should definitely be looking into an E92 M3, um, particularly the E92 M3. I just see that those hold value more um, than the E93s or the E90s, my personal opinion. But yeah, guys, let me know down below. Would you guys buy an E92 M3 or would you guys buy a different M car and if so what M car would that be so yeah guys put your comments down below but without further ado that's gonna have to conclude the video I love y'all so much remember to stay humble I'll see you on the next one peace out